There we go. It looks like we're ready to rock and roll tonight. How's everybody doing? Ah, uh, Tugboat, you can retract those comments, but I've seen that. <laughs> so tonight I was going to do some Zelda stuff, but um, I'm going to do like my favorite part, which is not the cool part of Zelda. Or rather, I should take that back. The part that is actually the coolest part of Zelda is the Korok seed dudes. So I even started roughing in a little bit. It's hard to see. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Edie. Hello, Anthony, all the way from the UK. It's got to be like, like the middle of the night there. It's like eight hours ahead in the UK, right? From where I am in Oregon. Hey, Stacy. Hey, well, thanks for dropping by. I really appreciate it. 3 a.m. All right. Well, this will get you through till maybe 4 a.m. So I love the Korok seeds. They have like such weird chaotic energy, but in a very pleasant way. I don't like that. <laughs> Later, Stacy. So, who else is playing um, Tears of the Kingdom? I keep seeing people post like on Instagram and stuff and everyone is like way far ahead of where me and Ma'at are. I, um, I wish... Well, no, I'm glad I'm not, but I'm just not one of those people who can like call in sick and play video games. That's too stressful. Like video games for me are absolutely for when I have time to sit down and do nothing. Yeah, maybe I should move the switch into the bedroom and play in bed at night. That would be absolutely wild behavior. Got to look up what a Korok seed looks like. It looks like a little golden drop. I'm using um, some weird paper tonight. I was setting up 
for the stream and trying to find some watercolor paper and I came across this. And I don't know if I ever showed this on the stream before. I very rarely have used this, but um, this stuff is amazing. The heavyweight mixed media paper is just like the mixed media paper I use on my comic book pages, except it is so heavy. It's 350 pounds or 570 grams. And it is, I don't even know if I can show it on, but you can kind of see like, it's just so, so thick. It's like drawing on illustration board almost. Okay, for people who haven't played Zelda, uh, the Koroks are these little, like, tree spirits or something. They wear they have, they wear little masks made out of leaves, and their bodies appear to be made out of wood. And um, in the game, the purpose they serve is that you run around and you find them in sort of random places. Very often they're sitting underneath a rock. Um, lots of times there's some little challenge you have to do to sort of reveal them. And then uh, they give you a Korok seed, which you can um, exchange later in the game with a guy who... Um, you exchange the Korok seeds for like extra space in your inventory, basically. Um, but they, uh, when you pick up a rock with a Korok dude underneath it, um, they just go, they have this very distinct yaha that they do that is very cute. And um, they always are excited to be found. And it makes you wonder like how long they've been hiding underneath that rock waiting for someone to find them. <laughs> You're very welcome, Mark. I try to be inclusive in my stream. Not everything is imperial. Oh, nice, Math Raptor. I hope you are having a good time. I got very frustrated last night in a boss battle and could not continue. I don't remember the boss's name, but they're like a little critter and they, um, they're making, uh, all the water in the water kingdom muddy. And it's one of those things where I feel like we just have the wrong weapons in our inventory to take care of them very easily. The Zelda games are like kind of the only video games that I have been able to get obsessed with in the last couple of years. I find most video games like not very compelling, but um, Zelda actually, I think, sort of delivers on the promise of an open world in a way that a lot of, the, a lot of games have not.
Yeah, the um, it's one of the few games, Mark, that I think you could actually get rid of the fighting, and it would still be really fun if it was just puzzles and stuff. That would be um, still a really compelling game. Like one of the best things about it is just how, whenever you get bored with whatever you're doing, you can kind of just go off and have your own adventure and go exploring and collect Korok seeds and collect um, stuff to cook with and all that jazz. Like it's one of the few games I've ever played where grinding is fun. Oh my gosh, Math Raptor. I haven't even found the Elephant Temple. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, yeah Mark, the open world in Zelda is like... Like, it's real. Like, if you can see someplace and you can figure out like if you have like the stamina and supplies to be able to make it there, like you can go there. I mean, with the exception of the, like the edge of the map or whatever, but um, it's really incredible. The only weird thing about this game is um, I was working on a game years and years ago, um, a game that we were pitching that um, had the construction mechanic from this game, like almost exactly the same. Like shooting a little, um, it was actually a blue sort of turquoisey beam at an object and being able to um, stick them together. And when I saw that in the... Tears of the Kingdom, I was a little taken aback because it was so similar. <laughs> it almost felt like I should, Math Raptor, but um, I do not care. And the other thing to Math Raptor is that the uh, the concept I think was sort of self-evident. Like it could definitely, 
I mean, we were we were pitching to Nintendo at the time. We definitely pitched that game to Nintendo, um, but that was like it was like fifteen years ago, and it would be very easy to come up with that idea. Totally independent of our pitch. Hey, Ed, how you doing, man? Shell, how you doing? <laughs> that is the perfect emoji for tonight. <laughs> right so like the um zelda games are worth talking about feels like feels like a um like i don't know there's so much bad shit going down and like the zelda games are just nice It's like entering a Studio Ghibli movie, but a particularly pleasant one. Like, I don't know if I'd really want to enter Princess Mononoke world. Yeah, if you're into games, ED, I think you, I think, I think just about anybody who likes games would enjoy Breath of the Wild. Actually, I wonder, like, I wonder what kind of maniac hates Bre Zelda. There's got to be somebody. It's like the people who buy the the all black switch. Like what kind of weirdo does that? Yeah, I wasn't really into Zelda, I guess, either myself until um, uh, Wind Waker on the GameCube. And I really liked that game. And then Breath of the Wild was the very first game that I ever played twice, like all the way through. Like when I finished it the first time, I took a a break for like a week and then just started over. <clears throat> and I've never I've never had a game that I wanted to play twice before. So good on them.
Oof, I don't think there is a PC version. I think it's just on the Switch, right? Yeah, that's Nintendo for you. I don't know if Nintendo has has they ever made a PC game? <laughs> so I think I'm going to keep this one all ink today and not not use watercolor Kind of just to see how this paper does. It's already curling just a little bit from the um, from the hair dryer. Let's see how it does with some airbrush. I heard that about a Zelda movie too. Um, I didn't like look into it very much, but the person was talking about how uh, it was going to be animated, which is probably a good thing. Trying to get a nice gradient. Now, ED, Sony does not own Nintendo. As far as I know, Nintendo might still be a privately owned, like a family owned affair.
<laughs> I wonder if Nintendo is actually doing that good. I always get the impression that they're sort of, sort of like like every other console they make is kind of a failure, it seems like. Like the um what was the one after the Wii? Was it just called the Wii U? Like I don't think that one sold. I don't think that one they sold hardly any of those. One of the good things about Nintendo is that they are like so good with their um, dev kits. Like when I was doing video games, Sony's like uh, PS3 dev kit was like, I forget how much it was. It was like 600 grand or something ridiculous. And the, um, the Nintendo dev kits were like a thousand bucks. And I think they're they're sort of always like that where their dev kits are very accessible. And their APIs are like really well um just really nicely developed and easy to use and stuff. But they're never as po as powerful as like a PlayStation or Xbox. <laughs> Do you used to work in video games, ED? That's part of why I have a hard time playing games nowadays was I just got so burnt out from working on them that even playing them was like exhausting. Yeah, I mean, the Switch is like, like, it's a toy compared to the PlayStation, but, um, but they still have the best game, you know? Oh my gosh, did they have Apple dev kits? Like different hardware for development stuff? This paper is weird. It is like really soaking up the ink. I don't know if you can really make that out, but there's like a weird texture that it's given me from the from the way the sort of pigment is 
getting absorbed by the paper. Very interesting. Yeah, like it's, can you see how it soaked in this area right here? And now I can't blend it anymore, even though it's, should still be wet. Probably have to wet the area first. And then put in the little bit of ink. This is uh, this stuff, the Strathmore Heavyweight. Mixed media paper. It is, I think I was introducing it before you, you arrived, but it is so thick. It's like, um, I don't know, a couple millimeters thick, at least. Well, I think the stuff with the um, Strathmore mixed media paper is that the sizing is like mixed in, because lots of times that's like a coating that they add to the paper. And I think they mix the sizing in with the paper pulp. Cause they always say in the, in like the documentation or whatever that it's internally sized. Which man, I wish there was a better word for that. Cause it's very confusing to talk to people about sizing of paper. Yeah, some of that Canson paper is pretty good. Um, I only like, like I like the um, the Strathmore stuff just marginally better. But the Canson is like so much cheaper. Like, like if I wasn't doing this for a living, I would definitely use the Canson paper. Yeah, actually, man, this paper is kind of ruining my technique. Like, look at how just like splotchy and nasty that looks. Let's hit it with the hairdryer and see if it helps it at all.
could be a bad sheet. I could also be on the back side of it. Like I have noticed that um, Strathmore's mixed media stuff tends to have like a, a front side and a back side. Usually it doesn't make this big of a difference though. Makes me think maybe I should switch to something else. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see how acrylic gouache works. Yeah, I think it looks, thanks Tugboat, I think it looks okay. It's just, like in person, it's a little bit, I don't know, goofy looking. So I'm going to try these guys, this acrylic wash stuff, and see how, <clears throat> see if it'll stay on the surface just a little bit better. Because even watered down, I think this stuff will want to live on top of the paper more. Yeah, this is basically doing the same thing. I mean, this isn't how you're supposed to use acrylic gouache anyway. You're supposed to use it a lot thicker, but. I like my shit transparent.
I wonder, it could be the the airbrush actually could have like kind of jacked up the surface of this paper a little bit. Because I'm using like an acrylic ink. So it could be like the little dots of acrylic are preventing the water from soaking into the surface evenly. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks guys. Yeah, I um I also like Koroks in autumn colors. Here in Oregon, we're having some really good June gloom. That's making me wistful for autumn. Oh my gosh, Kelly, I actually went around in closed windows because I was getting cold today. Which is like, I'm just so, so grateful that we don't have like wildfires raging right now. It's like, that's me for the rest of my life. It's just like praying, praying we don't get taken out by a wildfire. Yeah, exactly, Kelly. I mean, they say it's going to be a real hot summer. And it's very nice to have some sort of normal weather for a minute before everything goes off the rails. Speaking of going off the rails, that is the phase that this painting is in.
So moving into opaque paint territory. And now I don't know if this is going to work out at all. Um, I like acrylic gouache a lot. I like, um, I like that when it dries, you ca it can't be reactivated, you know, like regular gouache. So working in opaque layers is like way easier. Um, but I don't like how fast it dries. It just dries so fast that I often feel like I'm not, like I can't blend anything ever. Although I did see, I watched a YouTube thing just the other day, and the painter on that was using a an acrylic gouache retarder that would slow down... Um, the drying on the paint and that was uh very interesting to me i hadn't really considered that because um, i think if you did that it would work a lot more like oil paint which would be really cool Grimace never lays down. Oh, the is the Winsor Newton blending medium for acrylic? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this is going off the rails. I don't know what I can do to save this one. Like, unless I go all opaque with it. Oof. 
<laughs> Going over the opaque bits with line work. I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can do something with this grass. Uh, I've done stuff on the stream before that I thought I would not be able to save, and then it kind of turned out okay in the end. But oof. just mixing transparent with opaque medium is not not always easy. <laughs> Thanks, Shell. Yeah, the Koraks are in have different moods in their masks. Yeah, I guess that's a that's reasonable, Mark. <laughs> I think I think that that's one of those things that um, like I would put in the email to my editor when I send him something that I wish was better.
<laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, I think it is actually kind of kind of helping it along. Also, I think it looks a little better on stream than it does in real life. One of the hard parts with acrylic wash is just getting getting it to flow quite right. It's never it always feels like too thick or too thin. It's really hard to get it to go how I want it to go.
Um, Mark, you know, I haven't actually even read the whole thing yet. I just did that one page for it. Yeah, I think um, Dreamlike was exactly what they were going for, Mark. It's definitely got that um, little Nemo thing going on. Hmm. Yeah, I think the um, 
The blue is helping a little bit. It's a little too dark. I think the thing that might actually save this is to go in with black ink and sort of try to unify everything with, with a strong outline or something. I don't know. And my airbrush gradient that I was so careful to put in is like completely gone. That's how it goes. Um, What do you mean by that?
And gradients are dead on this piece. It's replaced with texture. Although I like Mark's point about making the Korok feel separate from the rest of the world. I think that kind of is working in this case. Laying down just a little more texture, and then I'm going to go in with some black ink and see if that will actually pull everything together.
So ED, a Korok is like a little, um, it's like a tree spirit or like a, they might just be like a seed spirit. And they hide all over the world of Zelda. And when you find them, they'll give you a seed. They are um, very pleasant little little people. I don't know. So they wear little leaves as a mask. And I do not know if they have like faces under the mask. It'd be terrifying to find out. They kind of like, I don't know, do they hover in the air? They kind of dance around, but I don't know if they do on their tiny little legs or if they're just like floating. They have a um, magical vibe though, so they can do whatever they want. Yeah, they're kind of woodland spirits. They're not always just in the woods, though. Like, you can find them everywhere in the game. Sometimes they're very far away from any sort of, like, plants.
I feel like this is helping a little bit. Oh, tugboat. Yeah, there should have been there should have been leaf masks last Halloween. Yeah, ha, ha, indeed. It'd be a pretty easy costume if you just do the leaf mask. Oh, I didn't mention. Wednesday was my birthday. Turned 49. Thanks, E.D. Forty nine is feeling pretty old lately. <laughs> 
2.8 billion miles. It barely feels like 2.5. Well, I got mixed feelings about this one. I don't feel like it's quite come together. Like, it's okay for a Friday night. Goof them up. But the picture in my brain was a lot more glowy, kind of. It happened, so. And I'd rather do it. <laughs> I'd rather have a picture that I don't like on stream than, um, like, something I have to turn in for a paycheck. Let me see if a little more highlights will help. Uh, this isn't really helping. Made those knees look nice, though, I guess. <laughs> Dozens of dollars. One dollar for every never nude. All right, I'm going to call it quits. Should we do the tape? We should do the tape.
is, little guy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I and mean, that's that's the thing about art, I guess, is um, it is very subjective. And nobody will ever see your art the way you do, which is usually a good thing. All right, well, there's that little guy. I'll give it a scan in a little bit after it dries a little more and post it on the socials. I have, I don't know if anyone is too concerned, but I quit Twitter um, officially this week. Um, I did get a Blue Sky um, account, though, an invite, and have been goofing around on there, and it's pretty great. Um, but mostly I will be on Instagram from now on. So uh, follow me there. Yeah, Mark, Twitter got to the point where I was like, I cannot, I just did not feel good doing anything that would help put money in Elon Musk's pocket. The guy's a piece of crap. You're welcome, Kelly. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody who joined me tonight. Um, it's always really fun to see everybody. I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, make time for playing Zelda. All right, everybody. Make sure you tell the people that you love how much you love them. And I will see you next Friday. Thanks. Bye.